So my beautiful people, I am back with another Dying Light 2 video and today may just be the start of an ongoing series, who knows, we'll see how it goes. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like it really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So this new series, or what could possibly be a series, is just basically weekly videos going over the past week in what's happened with Dying Light 2. And well, the first episode is going to be quite a juicy one because we have had a ton of things going on with the game. So let's start guys. So this past week we saw the launch of Dying Light 2, February 4th. And although for some people the launch was as expected for many, many folks, it was a disaster. So where did it all start? Well, firstly, we saw a lot of early access reviews for the game. Techland sent out review codes for people to play the game before release, but then also said people shouldn't judge the game until they've played it with a day one patch. Yet we saw IGN GameSpot absolutely obliterate the game, calling it basically a car crash. I, on the other hand, didn't have any major issues whatsoever, and it seems as though I ain't the only one. But hey, it is what it is. Opinions are opinions. Some people expect too much, others don't. Some people are kind of realistic at the same time. So we got a day one patch with over 1,000 bug fixes. Now imagine what the game would be like without these 1,000 fixes, people. Because that was the state of the game I was playing and I still didn't really notice much bugs. But that's beyond the point. If they've fixed a thousand issues, then it's clear that the game had over a thousand issues. We cannot deny that. So the game released day one patch. It had both negative and positive reviews from the general player base. But as much as people like me love the game, there were still many, many people out there having some absolutely shocking issues with the game. Issues such as being in death loop so they can't uh, continue or progress the story. Story blockers, a game where you can't progress the story. And in general, just a lot of major performance issues. And this ain't just on console as well, this is both on PC at the same time. We then saw the announcement of further fixes, guys. But yeah, with the game not being in the greatest state at the moment, Techland are obviously working their butts off in trying to fix the issues. In my opinion, there's no real excuse as to why these, these progression blockers haven't been sorted quicker, because leaving it till a week after launch is a bit a bit on the wrong side in my opinion. But I ain't gonna delve too deep into it. I'm a game developer, I don't know anything about coding. So it's all good and dandy me sitting here judging the developers of this game or any game. But at the end of the day, it's clearly harder work than we think. So I ain't gonna go too deep into it. But besides the issue guys, people playing the game and enjoying the game and now seeing and finally completing it. Now I know Tetland said prior to release that there's 500 hours in this game uh, to complete absolutely everything i know they cut the time down to 80 hours and i said it had a 20 hour story well that's a lie because it took me probably 40 hours to do the story and i weren't even doing side quests guys and with all the side quests and secrets and things to do farm this that, and the other i can actually see their point of 500 hours i think i'm close to 150 hours in the game now and i've barely touched the surface in terms of side quests and things to do find and explore now as you'd expect we we have seen a ton of amazing easter eggs, a ton of crazy exploits and we'll just go over a few. The main easter eggs that spring to mind for me are the Kyle Crane easter eggs and a couple of references we do have to him. Also I think that the Doom secret challenge uh, is absolutely incredible. This is one of the better easter eggs I've seen in the game. And also, I know it's small, but the Super Mario Boots is a pretty good one too. These allow you to have that triple jump, and it's just one of those fun easter eggs you just gotta take advantage of. We've also seen some crazy exploits, guys, in terms of duping. And we know once a dupe hits a game like this, I mean, it's all over for the ecosystem in the game. I mean, once you can dupe and the game's co-op, I mean, it's just over. It's just over. But I think this is something Techland expected and in the development of Dying Light 2, I think they've made many workarounds for it not to kill the game, which I believe they've done a good job in that. We've also seen some other crazy exploits, like being able to take certain weapons out of challenges they should be locked to, like the Doom Kadoom shotgun, also the broomstick, and also the hoverboard. The fact that we can take these into the open world 
outside of the challenges they should be exclusive to in my opinion is both broken yet amazing at the same time because it does make things a lot more fun i mean i love scaling the city with my paraglider and my grapple hook and my parkour skills but i'd much rather fly over buildings with my broomstick waving at the zombies down below but hey that's just me if you want to play the game like a ninja you don't have to use any of these exploits that's completely down to you we've also seen the community getting together and helping each other in terms of certain easter eggs they're doing one mainly because there's five black ducks you may know about that you need to collect that are spread around the city people were certain that the fifth one wasn't in the game yet they thought it was bogged out this and the other but actually it was found and it's right near the start of the map where you actually come into the open area which is bizarre how did most people miss this but yeah people clocked together and we eventually got all five ducks and this allowed us to actually play with the doom challenge which like i said earlier is an incredible easter egg we also had the seven red ducks which unlocks the bike challenge this has more recently been solved and it allows you to do the bicycle challenge again another exploit you can take this uh, bicycle out of the actual challenge and ride it around the city not as good as the broom or the hoverboard neither the kadoom shotgun but it still works now they ended the week uh offering well announcing the first of three three dlcs uh the authority pack which arrived today this morning i know there was a few issues with it for many people though it's now seemingly sorted but yes a nice little touch to end the initial week and start this new week the dlc items are basically a full set of pk gear where part one which is what arrived today we get three pieces part two we'll get another three pieces and part three we will get the weapon I know the timing's kind of off with this because the game's still bust for many, many people. And with them already implementing DLC, will that make things better or will it make them worse? I don't know. And I've also saw, and I'll end the video in a quick second, incredible support on my videos and my channel. Now, Dying Light 2 is a game I've been waiting for a long time. I mean, I didn't play much of the first one because of other games that were out at the time. But I knew Dying Light 2 could indeed do wonders on my channel. And when you post over 55 videos in 6 days like I have. Of 150 hours in the game. I guess that hard work pays off. But again none of this would be possible without you amazing people. And that amazing support. But yes. This past week in Dying Light has been a crazy one. A roller coaster of a ride. Who knows what the next week will bring us. Well we will find out. On that note guys, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Dying Light, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully people, I will see you on that next one.